Hey guys, welcome to another video. Just want to do a quick one as I'm outside tonight actually capturing images and uh, just to show you the setup in action, sort of how it works, and to explain what I'm shooting tonight. So hopefully, you can see. I'll grab this. Here we got our telescope and camera doing its thing or imaging as we speak. And uh, as you can see, just to give you a quick tour of my surroundings, this is what you call urban astrophotography. I am in a very bright area. Street lights, houses lit up. This is definitely not what you'd call ideal, but there's a reason why I'm out here tonight at the front of the house. Normally I'm at the side where it's a lot more darker and not as open. But tonight I'm actually shooting uh, a target called Thor's uh, helmet. It's an emission nebula, but the problem with it is it's quite low in the sky. It only gets to about 30 degrees uh, from our latitude here in Toronto, 43 degrees. So that's quite low. And the problem is it doesn't actually clear the roof when I'm at the side of the house. So the only way to image it is here in the front. And uh, let me see if I can flip around here. Here you can see our setup. There's the 76 millimeter sharp star, our Canon camera. You can see our USB hub powering everything. Still lots of juice left on that. Got the suppression pads going. There's the remote to the intervalometer. And you can see our camera is taking exposures. So tonight we're taking one minute exposures. Four seconds in between, ISO 800, I believe. So we're hoping to get two and a half, three hours. And I've actually already taken two hours on this particular target last week. It's pretty exciting that I'm able to get out two, two nights in a matter of seven, eight days. This time of year that doesn't happen often, so definitely happy to be out tonight. It's quite mild, even though you probably hear me shivering. And uh, the sky is actually quite clear. So happy about that. But yeah, about our target tonight. So if you see that bright star there in the middle of the screen, that's actually, sorry, that's actually Sirius. That's the brightest star in our night sky. And just to the left of that is Thor's helmet. It's a very small emission nebula, very faint, and um, it's definitely a tricky target. When you're, when you're using a, a wide field telescope like this one here with a focal length of about 330, that's with the focal reducer in it, it's a very small object. I'll actually show a picture here, just how small the target is. That's it in the red box there. So it's pretty small on that three inch screen. So that's a challenge. It's low in the sky. That's also difficult. Um, it's also quite faint. It's, it's an 11.5 magnitude. And just to give you a reference, I don't know if you can see Orion there above the roof. You can see the, that three star belt. Orion Nebula, the nebula itself, is a magnitude 4. So the lower the magnitude, the brighter the object. So we compare a 4 with Thor's helmet, which is a magnitude 11.5. So quite a difference. And uh, takes a little bit more exposures in order to get a nice clear image of it. So as mentioned, hoping to add on another 2.5, 3 hours, and we'll get somewhere around 4.5, 5 hours total. The other challenge tonight, that guy right there, full moon. A lot of people won't even image on a full moon, but as I talked about, just flip around here. As I talked about in my uh, accessories, essential accessories portion of my three part series there on my setup, a good light pollution filter, what a difference it makes. So tonight I'm using the Optolong. L Extreme. It's a narrow band uh, light pollution filter that's only going to allow in uh, light from the uh, nebula itself. So it's going to block out all these street lights and even the moon, the light from the full moon, I'll block that out and hopefully we'll get a quality image as a result. So that's why I said spend your money on a good light pollution filter. It allows you to image on nights like this, whereas before they came out with filters like that, 
guys just simply didn't bother they stayed in the house it just wasn't worth it so we'll see hopefully uh, I'll be able to back it up but uh, yeah we're, uh, we're hoping to get another two three two three hours and hopefully I'll have an image for you at, at the end of this video so just a quick overview again we got our telescope there's the star adventure and you can see if I can just sneak in here you can see those are the weights that provide sort of the offset weight to help balance as that tracker turns and what happens is as this continues on for the next hour or so that telescope is going to get dip lower and lower and those weights will go higher and that's what it's doing it's tracking just beside Sirius there and Sirius is going to slowly move across the night sky and eventually go there over the roof and uh, I won't be able to image any longer you can also see I got the uh, garbage can out that's just to help block the wind and we got some wind coming in from the east just a slight breeze but that helps deflect it a little bit and keep that uh, telescope nice and still as we talked about stability is everything you want that uh, telescope dead still the only thing moving should be the star tracker itself as you can see there as it follows the night sky so let's see what we're able to get hopefully I'll have an image for you tonight and we'll have an image of Thor's helmet, a beautiful emission nebula that looks just like the Marvel character Thor's helmet. So hopefully uh, you enjoy it and hope to see you in the next one.